Hey Chris, it's Tony here. Look, I've, I know it's been a few weeks since I was on your show, but it's honestly, it's been the first time being able to sit down and really have a look at it and, and review what we were talking about. Um, and I must admit, just from a sort of aesthetics point of view, that time delay was a killer. I mean, 14, 10, 14 hours is a long time for a signal to travel. And one o'clock in the morning is a little bit hard to get your thoughts together. So um, don't junk everything I said on my poor ability to aim what I was saying. But to pull a couple of things out of that, first off, uh, to just review what I considered um, the, the development of behaviours that led to what we now label as moral, I was referring to the time uh, from an anthropology evolutionary time scale. When we first sort of started hopping out of trees and, and walking the plains as ape-like uh, uh, our ape-like ancestors, okay? Well, this is the times I was talking about. Now, you've got a set of behaviours that's, it's not right, it's not wrong, it's not moral, it's not immoral. It's, it, it either leads to a survival choice or a non-survival choice. Now, the ones that pick the survival choice will tend to do well. The ones that don't, well. Now, this, over millions of years, gets hardwired into us. Okay, these behaviours are really sort of just put right into it. I mean, did you ever have to be taught not to eat rotting flesh? Did you ever have to be taught not to jump from a high place? I mean, these are some of the things that just seem to be with us. From I didn't need a god or mum or dad or anybody to tell me that these things are wrong. They just sort of sparked a life in you. Now, from what you were saying, this is the problem I think that you encounter is that one, um, your, your religion and your choice of deity is a personal choice for you. Okay, that, that's just the way it is. I mean, you choose to believe what you want to believe. Hence the millions of denominations of, of each religion, okay? It, it's all a choice. It might be small little choices. It might be big ones. But in the end, I mean, you know how you feel about the Catholic Church. But it is a choice and it is a personal opinion. And that's what it all boils down to. You might think of a deity who's giving you this information and doing all that. But really... It's just another choice because there's a number of deities you could choose from and given the way that you argue evidence, I could, uh, uh, by using your, your techniques for arguing evidence, I could basically support each and every one of them. If I wanted to give a good argument for reincarnation using your technique for arguing evidence, I could do that and you, you couldn't knock it down. So basically what you've done is, you, is you've made a choice. I don't believe in evolution. I don't choose to believe in evolution. I accept the facts that back it up. Thus, evolution is true. Okay, there's a, there's a bit of a difference. I don't choose to believe that the world is millions of years, billions of years old. Geology has given me some time scales. And look, we won't go into that here, but you know, I, I've seen your other videos, so you know, we're not going to make that argument. We're not even we're not even arguing whether evolution is true or not. Okay, and I know you nearly went there in the, in the interview, but um, honestly, that that's got nothing to do with it. But what I really want, the the problem you face is that in the end, you are arbitrarily believing what you interpret your deity is telling you to do. Okay, and this can be coming through a, um, a spiritual leader who you respect. It could be coming as a feeling, uh, all that sort of thing. In the end, you are interpreting what you think is his choice of what for you to do. Thus, things like right, wrong, moral and immoral are redundant. They, they just don't matter. What you do is you do what you think God wants you to do. So if one of the punishments for separating yourself from him is to eat your children to get back in his good graces, what do you do? If you are told that your neighbours are heretics and deserve death and you're the one to carry out the sentence, what do you do? 
Okay, we're not dealing with right and wrong here. We're dealing with religious zealotry. Okay, and I'm not, I'm not calling you a zealot. Um, I probably have in the past, so. But, I mean, that was a very cordial um, interview, too, and, and I was quite surprised by that. But, uh, but in the end, the point I'm trying to make is right, wrong, moral, immoral, it doesn't really apply because what you're doing is is you are just enacting what you think it is your deity concept demands you to do, okay? Now, you get back to me on that one because I think it's an important issue because in the end, religion becomes not immoral or moral or right or wrong. It just becomes a tool for some of the worst things that have ever happened in history. I'll leave it there. Get get back to me on a couple of those points. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind if you did a video or PM me, whatever, but I think we really have to clear that up because I see it as a real failing of your side of the argument. Thanks, Chris. Have a good one.